Hi, I'm Megan Walker and we've reached the letter H in the A to Z of real-time marketing. So H is holistic reporting. So basically we're going to look at an area within the real-time marketing that combines all of our reporting and analytics for all of the journeys and the emails that we have. So this is one thing that I feel has been missing from the Dynamics 365 marketing app up until now. If you wanted to see analytics for a journey or an email, you have to go in individually to each thing and look at them sort of independently or separately of one another. So what Microsoft have done is realize that actually someone might want to look at all of their journeys together. So now we have this area where we can go in and we can actually do that. So let's take a look and we'll see how we can see. We'll see how we can see. We'll take a look at the analytics. All right, so let's go ahead and get in. So we're in the real-time marketing area. And what we've got in the customer engagement section at the top is we have this analytics area. Now, as this is loading, as you, as you start to use real-time marketing, it might take some time before you see anything really of sort of value in here. It's taken a while before I'm actually starting to get some kind of analytics here. Now we can see here that it clearly says Power BI reports. So what they've done is created reports using Power BI and then essentially embedded it within the app for marketing in the real-time marketing area. Now, it also says it gets refreshed every few hours, so that's another thing to keep in mind if you are sending stuff out and then come back in and try and see it, you're not going to see it update for a little bit. Now, what we first of all, we've got a few um, sort of um, uh, filters or slices at the top here. So first of all, we can filter based on a specific journey. So I can see here I've got a journey, create new opportunities. As soon as I select that, it's going to change the um, the charts and the, and the visualizations on the report. Excuse me. <coughs> I won't edit that out. Um, so we can then go ahead and select different ones or we can just select all. What we've also got is journeys starting, and then we have some date range, last X months, next, this. Um, we can then change to days, weeks, calendar, weeks, months, and so on. So we've got some, oh, that's not what I'm gonna click on. So we've got um, some uh, date ranges that we can click on. We've then got the status of the journey. So at the moment we have two statuses. We have a live status, it means it's running, people are going through it or people could join to start going through it. Or we have stopped. Nobody's going to uh, continue, nothing's going to happen. So we can switch and we can see live or stopped, one or the other or both. That's annoying. So basically, what am I clicking on that does that? Something's in there. That's interesting. Okay, I'll have to figure out why it's doing that and uh, report that back. So we can then go ahead and we can say, okay, well, what about the journey goal? So let me go and make sure that's on there because I know that I have a goal. And if you watched the video from yesterday, G was all about goals. You'll know that we um, had a journey that used a goal specifically. So this one was to engage customers. So this is a nice filter where I can say, right, well, I want to see how my journeys are doing based on a specific goal that I've set up. So maybe you've set up the same goal on multiple journeys. So I could say, right, I want to see how we're doing for those that don't have one, or we'll look at the ones that are set to engage customers. So that's a nice little filter as well. So now as we scroll down, we can see that we've got, um, uh, one out of seven uh, total journeys that have met a goal. Now with that, that's basically because I have six that are unspecified. Okay, so yes, I've only got one that has actually met the goal, but I guess if you do a goal for every single one of your journeys, then you would find that valuable. Total inflows, so how many journeys have you got? Um, sorry, how many people are currently um, going through or have gone through a journey so the inflow is when they start at the top and then they actually start flowing through the journey. Um, email engagement rate so actually if we have a look 
what's that telling us? They have the number of unique users that opened or clicked on links divided by the total number of emails sent. So that's a fairly typical stat that you might want to see. If you're doing push notifications, you're going to see the engagement rate for that and then also for text messages as well. So now if we go down to the journeys, we can see um, how many days active, how many people are in the flow of that journey, the goal status if we'd set a goal. Um, now let's see, there we go. So if I click on this one with the goal, then we can see sort of the status by day and then the goal, have they how far along are you in terms of meeting that goal. So that would be useful if you're using the goals. Um, let's just click off that filter. Uh, so then further on down, why people participated in the journey. So I would say rather than why, but how. So was it because they started in a segment or is it event triggered? So we can see that we've got um, a split there in terms of the segment and then what segment they were in and then also what event triggered. Why people left the journey? Did they complete it? We're going to look in another video where we're going to look at other reasons why someone might exit a journey. So why they left. Then we've got further down some channel engagement success. So this is going to be looking at um, your sort of open rate, your click rate. Um, we've got delivery failure, unopened rates. We've got content delivered, opened or clicked. So this is just kind of the sort of things that you would be expecting to see in terms of the engagement of your emails or your text message and so on. And then down at the bottom, any A-B tests that were set up, we can see a little bit more information here in terms of what the result was, if it's still in progress, if it was terminated, that kind of thing. Finally at the top, we can see when it was last refreshed, so at least you know, okay, am I looking at the most up-to-date current data? Um, mine says the 4th, which was yesterday, and if it's refreshed every few hours, I don't think it's been refreshed. So, um, I'm not sure about my date on that one, but this is basically a great new feature that Microsoft have added. They've thought about, someone needs to be able to look at their reports as a whole, holistically, um, and they need to be able to filter based on certain things, dates, time frames, specific journeys, goals, all of that good stuff. So let me know what you think. Like I said, this might take a while before it actually starts to refresh your data. Um, so be patient if you're just starting out with a journey and there's only like two people that have gone on it, it's not likely to be a whole lot of data to see. So as you start to do stuff, this will populate, fill out and give you a really rich reporting experience. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.